What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another edition of Letters of the Long Box. Why, why have my headphones on? You know, I'm just going to keep them on. It makes me feel more comfortable, if that's okay with you guys. But hey, uh, happy uh, day before July 4th, or maybe, what is today? Today's the second, so two more days. So until your Independence Day on Saturday. Speaking of which, uh, I am going to be part of a Mikey Sutton Scoop Jam on Saturday, July 4th, along with Cosmic Wonder and about... 10 other YouTube channels, so make sure you peep that out. I know uh, you're limited on what you can do this year for July 4th, so hopefully we can bring you some fireworks with some good old-fashioned scoops and another Mikey Sutton scoop jam that we've been kind of saving up for July 4th. Little do we know that we'd still be on this shutdown since the last scoop jam that we did. But once again, welcome to Letters from the Long Box, where uh, every Thursday, Mikey and I read your viewer mailbag questions just like in the back of a comic book. This is coming from the Geekosity Facebook page, as well as Lords of Longbox video, the same video that you saw last Thursday. So we got some questions from the Lords of Longbox YouTube channel, as well as from the Geekosity. So let's write to it, boys and girls. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. And congratulations to all those who got their uh, questions selected. Some are really good, and some are just uh, kind of funny, actually. But <laughs> we'll go right to it. All right, first question is from uh, Lords of Longbox video. This is from Mark Bird Birdeos. I hope I said that right. Well, Brie Larson... Make a few appearances in the upcoming Miss Marvel Disney Plus series. Yes, they would like Brie Larson to appear on the Miss Marvel TV series, kind of a, a gateway to you know, obviously not just the character name, but you know to the MCU to get some credence. Uh, there was a bit of a handoff, but the Miss Marvel Kamala Khan character has kind of come into her own and is just Miss the Marvel name. Just kind of they just shared it between them two, even though she was introduced in this in the Captain Marvel comics. Uh, she has kind of grown into her own. So kudos for her. Thanks for the great question, Mark. Uh, <laughs> second question comes from our friends at Kixotic Comics up in the Great North. Happy Canada to you, to all our friends from the Great North. Uh, my question is for Mikey. What did Melissa Benoist smell like? Roses. All right. Uh, next question is for uh, from the Lords of Longbox. And this is from, oh, man, I hope I said this right. Manmohan Mahatma. Manmohan Mahatma. Boy, I hope I said that right. That is one hell of a name, though. That is a cool name to have. Hi, from super Hi, I'm a superhero fan from India. To Mikey and TiVo, my question is, any news rumor about Marvel and DC crossover in the big screen or in the TV series? It is a dream. A lot of us have, but I don't see it ever happening anytime soon. I mean, there's enough uh, legal licensees just with Marvel and their own stuff. The, put it this way. You, don't even, you won't even see a Marvel DC comic book crossover let alone something on the big screen. They maybe have little Easter eggs here and there, but I don't ever see this happening unless uh, one of them gets bought by the other. I don't know. It's just something I may have heard, but you never know. But probably not in our near future unless uh, AT&T decided to just give up. Even then, say AT&T didn't want to publish DC Comics anymore. They still don't want to give up the intellectual property because the movies that uh, Warner Brother makes makes a ton of money, a lot more money than DC Comics does. But, uh, you know, DC Comics seems to be doing well, so we shall see. AT and T seems to be selling off some of the other things, uh, most namely the the Warner Brothers game division. I believe AT and T just sold that or is looking to sell it. There's been some other pieces here and there, but so we shall see. But I seriously doubt you'd ever see a combination of, you know, Superman going up against Thor or something, which we would love. It would be great. But even the days of those in the comics are in a long gone in the past from the 80s and 90s. I don't think the other, the two publishers would even ever do a comic book together. Maybe with a smaller publisher, but never DC and Marvel, at least I, in my opinion. Uh, next question. Uh, thank you for that question. Man Mahan Mahat. Huh? I hope I said your name right. Uh, next question is from Miguel H. Hi, Mikey. I love Kitty Pride in the Marauders comic, just like TiVo. That's right. I've been loving that read. It's basically Kitty Pride as a pirate. It's pretty cool. Have you heard any plans for her in the MCU? Thanks, Miguel from Montreal. Look at that Canadian flavor we got today. That's two questions from our friends from up north. Maybe it's coincidence that it's, it's Canada Day and we're giving you guys props, but shout out to our neighbors up north. Hey, Miguel. Kitty Pride is a character you will be frequently seeing in the MCU. There are plans for her to appear on S.W.O.R.D., which we have talked about on here, and Excalibur. Both being in development for Disney Plus, she will be in the movies as well. Disney uh, Kitty Pride is a pretty cool character, and has been so. And this 
current iteration of her, when Kitty Pride go full on badass, she goes full on badass. In the Marauders comic, when she starts fighting hand to hand combats, there's scenes where she turns her arms intangible and it goes through somebody's chest and they come become solid again. That's how badass she is. Kind of like an invisible woman. She can put an invisible bubble inside of your body and expand it and explode you from the inside out. Just to show some of these characters you think are kind of goofy. But if they want to be written badass, a, the right writer can make them badass. All right, next question is coming from Sean Stiller. Any chance Quasar will come to the MCU? Why, yes. And we're going to have a scoop on that real soon. Matter of fact, we had Quasar, a.k.a. Marvel Boy, on our long-term spec list a few months ago. So uh, the question is... What version of Quasar? Because there's quite a few iterations of her. If you don't want to have FOMO, get them all. <laughs> that's, that's an easy question. Get all the appearances of uh, Quasar, Marvel Boy, the female Quasar, and all on, so on and so forth. All right. Those are all the questions from the uh, Lords of Longbox. Let's move on to our friends from Geekosity. It's a Facebook page Mikey Sutton is a part of. I'm a part of, as well as some other admins. And it's uh, where he drops a lot of his scoops after we drop the videos on uh, our YouTube channels. Uh, the first question has come from, man, you guys aren't going to make the names easy this week, are you? Salman Ali Verk. I hope I said that right. I keep on saying that a lot. Drink every time I say, I hope I said that right. Mikey Sutton, I've realized that 2020 marks the 15th anniversary of Constantine from uh, the movie I'm assuming he's talking about from 2005. Even though there wasn't a comic accurate version of it, but Keanu's casting made it a masterpiece. Anyway, have you happened to heard any whispers relating to a potential sequel announcement during the DC fandom event? Uh, no sequel with Keanu Reeves as Matt Ryan has cemented the role. Should they recast for the movies, he will be in the Ryan mold, meaning the version that you see on CW. You hear his voice on some of the DC animated movies. He basically embodies the character as we see him from the comics, kind of chain smoking, blonde hair, trench coat wearing guy. I think he's great. Keanu did a great, I mean, that movie, 2005 Constantine movie is, I think it's underrated. It's uh, right up my block as far as supernatural things are concerned with the uh, Constantine character. It's a great movie and Keanu Reeves did a great job with it. But like he said, Matt Ryan has really done a great job on it, not just on the live action, but the animated stuff as well. All right. Uh, next question comes from Jesus Alonso Salazar Guerrero. That's a mouthful. Mikey Sutton, do you also get scoops about Marvel video games? I don't know anyone in the video game industry, actually. That's what Mikey responds. So unfortunately, no. I know there's been a lot of buzz lately with the new Marvel game that they released a trailer for with a lot of interesting characters in it. So which has led to some speculation on the comic book market. I won't I will be honest with you. So and I think we're finding out with the Miles Morales stuff that came out uh, with the Spider-Man uh, PS5 announcement. And how those comics got hot? Well, you're going to find out July 4th on what really may be causing the drive of the sales of these uh, first appearance of Miles Morales. Just stay tuned on July 4th. And Miles is not going anywhere anytime soon. Let's just put it that way. Stay tuned. July 4th at noon, I'm going to drop the video. It's not a live video, so you can watch it on Rewind or at your leisure. But I'm going to drop it noon on July 4th. So noon Pacific time, by the way. Along with Cosmic Wonder and a bunch of other channels. All right. Last question comes from Igor Duarte, Mikey Sutton. Do you know anything about Namor's distribution rights? Is he really back at Marvel or is he really back to Marvel? Does Universal still hold it? Any chance of a solo film? Marvel Studios has them back and a Namor solo film is in early development. That's uh, one of the big scoops that helped relaunch this channel with the Black Knight Report. We had a early, early scoop that a Namor film was in development, or at least a character was in development. And uh, the first person that came to mind for Marvel was The Rock. The Rock was in talks to play Namor. Uh, with that, we don't know, because it looks like he's leaning more toward the DC side of the house. And did you remember at this time we dropped this Namor rumor? I'm going to talk about this again really quick. We dropped the Namor scoop about Kevin. And this is when Namor, when The Rock had meetings with Kevin Feige. At that time... The Black Adam movie was kind of, I wouldn't say it was paused, but the development hadn't really moved along as quickly as The Rock would like it. So The Rock met with Kevin Feige and The Rock said, I want to play Namor. And then we heard that they wanted to put Namor in Black Panther 2. And this was over a year ago that we dropped this. From what I've been told from Mikey and the Black Knight, the Namor in Black Panther 2 as a kind of anti-villain or at least a the storyline of Atlantis attacks is still something they're in discussions with. They still wanted The Rock. And what we think is The Rock kind of used that leverage to get Black Adam movie finally moving on. And then we find out next thing you know that The Rock wants to do a Justice League Society film. He wants to bring back Henry Cavill. So 
The Rock is a powerful character, man. He a person, excuse me, in Hollywood. He could potentially play in both the Marvel and DC uh, sandboxes, so you will. Only the other time we could really talk about it, such a big character was Josh Brolin when Fox and uh, Dis, uh, Marvel Studios were separated with the characters from the X Men and uh, universe and this Fantastic Four universe. You remember Josh Brolin played both Cable and he played Thanos at the same time. And so there's a so called uh, clause in Hollywood, and they call it the villain clause, right? He can play a villain in one universe and a hero in the other, but not heroes in both. Who knows if that's a real thing or not? That's what I heard. But if The Rock said, hey, I want to play a hero in both, maybe they do, maybe they don't. He's a very powerful player in Hollywood right now. And if The Rock wants it, The Rock will get it. I think The Rock will be perfect as Neymar. He fits, it, it matches the mold perfectly. Um, he's also making a great Black Adam, to be honest with you. But well, the Black Adam character be a villain or an anti-villain or an anti-hero? We don't know. If he's a full-on villain, does that mean he could play a hero in Namor? Either way, Namor is coming. Marvel has the rights. The Incredible Hulk, nah, it's kind of a gray area. If they can actually make a Hulk film named the Hulk. Now, if they can make a film called Wolverine versus the Hulk, probably. But from the universal rights are still murky that I do believe the Hulk does not fully belong to Marvel yet. So they, that's why they don't make Hulk solo films like they used to. That's when universal was doing the distribution for them, but the name more. And if you can look back to, I think a 2015 article, Joe Quesada actually said the rights to name are, are back at Marvel. So Joe Quesada dropped this a while ago in an interview. And so a lot of people forget that little nugget. So, Thank you all for joining us for another Letters of the Long Box. And if you like these videos, make sure you like it, subscribe, and leave a comment below. And maybe we'll read your question on next, week, next week's Letters from the Long Box. Until then, I will see you on Saturday, July 4th at noon Pacific. I will drop the Mikey Sutton Scoop Jam. It's got about four or five big juicy nuggets in it. Oh, that sounds dirty. But you're going to appreciate it. You're going to like it. And it's some, uh, some little fireworks for you on July 4th since you can't see any giant fireworks display. So until next time, boys and girls, keep digging in those long boxes. Peace out and stay safe, y'all.